at the Rotunda Lounge in Mystic Island, New Jersey. And I must have been probably around the ninth grade. Right. And they were plants that I got from the, um, that the, the big uh, Carolina Biological Supply Company. And there were some plants from Northrop's nursery, which was in Wilmington. Old man Northrop owned 40 acres of carnivorous plant hogs and stuff. He was actually the main seller of Venus flytraps commercially. Um, but my tank was fantastic. And I displayed it at the spring fair at the Rotunda Lounge. And there were pitcher plants, you know, Saracenia, no Nepenthes. Right. And lots of sundews and some butterworts and Venus flytraps. And some of the plants were native to my hometown. Um, but it was a fantastic tank. And then unfortunately, <laughs> I would put it outside in the winter time, I mean in the spring, because I thought it was too cold in our winters, although I was incorrect. Um, I put it outside on the side of my house and we had torrential rain and the gutter leaked right above it. <sighs> and I came home from school and it was an aquarium <laughs> <laughs> no. with all of these bare root plants floating around, you know. So I took it all apart and I put them into individual pots after that. And we still warn customers about terrariums becoming aquariums in wintertime now. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. If you get a lot of rain, it's all, you can't have an exposed tank. All this is hard-earned knowledge. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> and why weren't there any nepenthes in there? Because there was nobody selling them <laughs> right. back in 1960. Yeah, they're impossible to get. Not even the uh, the big Carolina Biological Supply Company. Right. That was one of the most, I think it still is, one of the most fantastic um, sellers of everything scientific, from laboratory equipment to plants and slime mold and all kinds of stuff. The kids got to get slime molds. Yeah. Do you remember... Um, when you saw Independence for the first time? The first time was when I moved to San Francisco. I was 20. And they had some at the Conservatory of Flowers in Golden Gate Park. Oh, so those are already there. And they had some. Judith Finn was growing some at the Berkeley Botanical Gardens. Right. And that was also where I first saw Cape Sun. That's so crazy. Which almost made me faint because these things were like 10 inches across. Right, they're amazing. And I was used to little rotunda folders. Right. You know? But that was where I first saw them. The first plant that I grew was from Bob Hanrahan oh, and wow. World Insectivorous Plants. And it was, most people just dismiss them now, but to me it was the most spectacular thing I ever had in my apartment in San Francisco. Nepenthes gracilis. Right. And it was a, it wasn't a pure green one. It was more of a darker bronzy colored. And I had this tall four foot high octagon shaped tank in the corner of my living room with grow lights above it. And this Nepenthes just grew up and spiraled around. And I had like a branch in there and those beautiful, perfect little pictures hanging like like little bells on it. People would come into my apartment and they would not know what on earth this thing was. Right. And it was gorgeous. And unfortunately, I moved up to Sonoma County with that plant. I'd had it for at least three years. And this uh, cabin that I shared was not heated well. Yeah. And the Penthes gracilis do not like it if the temperature drops below 60, 65. And it was dropping into the 40s, and it died within a couple of weeks of me moving up 